just an update here from the Wing and Tail Outdoors. Uh, we've got two deer down, which is great news. Uh, we're off to a decent start so far this season in New Jersey. Um, we haven't done a great job of getting those shots on camera, but we have a little bit of footage. Um, we're going to be putting together a video for that. If you're seeing this, um, the, obviously the other video is probably even posted already, but um, we're going to be finishing up that video. Uh, we have done a little bit more scouting in the area, and we have actually seen a pretty decent buck that we're going to be chasing. Um, we did see another buck one time earlier in the season. We named him Buttercup because of the color of his rack. Um, that was a one-time sighting. It was, you know, we were walking in, doing some scouting. We bumped him. We didn't really get a good look at him. We thought that he could potentially be a 10-pointer, but uh, again, we didn't really get a good look, and he was gone in an instant. Uh, since then, I did have another morning sit after the does. Um, I saw a pretty nice buck when I was driving in, and there's uh, some businesses that are just surrounding the area that I'm hunting, and the deer like to come out and they like to feed out on the lawns of, of those businesses. And um, while we were driving in to have a morning sit, we saw a pretty nice deer. It was actually spooked by us driving into the parking lot, and what happened is he kind of ran down this embankment that the um, business has and he kind of tripped himself up and he kind of skid into the blacktop in the parking lot area and kind of fell in there so we're calling him road rash and that's who we're going to be chasing um, I don't really know where they're hanging out what they're doing um, but I am trying to see if I can locate where they're bedding down um, it seems to be a little bit more focused on this southern part of the property so that's kind of where we're getting a little bit more um, action so we're gonna try to focus in and see if we can't get this deer uh, to show up for us um, you know we're just gonna do a quick morning sit I don't know how um, productive it's gonna be we haven't really had a, a sit yet in this area so if we don't see anything this morning we're gonna do a little bit of uh, scouting on the ground and then we'll see if we can't get a nice setup for the evening um, that's pretty much it we're hoping to see if we can't get a uh, a buck on the ground before this early bow season ends uh, we don't want to end up with a tag in our pocket and we're really hoping to get one leg of the tri-state trifecta down um, so let's uh, see what we can do here we might be able to hear some traffic we know that they've been crossing this river I don't know where going to cross it. I decided not to cross it. I'm kind of dependent on them crossing it. The reason I didn't cross it is because there is still some bedding opportunities on this side. We found a ton of rubs going up and down the side of this river. He could be bedding here, checking the river crossings, and then going out. He could be crossing the river himself, and then crossing and scenting the river. You gotta trust your gut. I think I'm gonna trust my gut on this one. I know they're crossing. I don't know when. Hopefully in daylight. So, another car update. We saw a road rash tonight. We think we did. I think it was him. Uh, he didn't cross the river. Um, there was a bedding area over to our right that we pointed out that we had assumed that there could potentially be some deer bedded in. And um, that's exactly where he was. He came in close to last light. I'm pretty sure it was him. I haven't seen any other deer that was that tall. And I had to look over my shoulder and I saw him. He was, you know, probably 40, 45 yards away. Low light conditions. I mean, very low light. He was just streaking by quickly. I couldn't even get the camera around on him. I just happened to just hear just a little rustling and I looked over and it was him and he just kind of walked through this opening. Um, 
it's pretty thick over there so you know any shot that we're gonna have we're gonna have to have it be up close or we're gonna have to shoot through a window um, it's a little discouraging but it's all right I mean we know that they're here we've seen him we're able to locate that this is a bedding area now um, we're gonna have to do a different setup because where he walked out of the bedding area he walked past my trail walking in so I mean I basically walked along the bedding area there's a little transition line there and um, you know we have that creek as you guys saw and then over my right shoulder I guess in that intro video I did to the spot um, there's just like a whole thick area that lines this I don't want to call it marsh because it's not that um, it's just some wetlands kind of I mean when the river overflows they probably get water but um, it's not covered in water right now it's just some really tall grasses but he came out a little bit north from us and he came uh, I guess he was walking from southwest to northeast in that direction so as he was walking he was getting further away from us so you know to take a shot in low light without a real range of where he actually is it just wouldn't have made any sense um, so what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna set up in a different area a little bit further down I don't know if there's gonna be any trees on the side that I'm on but now that I know that they're bedding on this side I think what we might try to do um, you know I don't want to play it safe but I think what I'm gonna do is I might actually try to see if I can come in from the other side of the creek and see if I can't get a shot into the area where they're trying to get to from that side so uh, I'm gonna keep this pretty short I'll leave it at that there's really nothing else to say I mean we saw them we know that they're in there um, we just got to find a way to go get them
Good morning, everyone, from the Wing and Tail office. This is where we've been recording some of our podcasts. Um, if you haven't, please take a second uh, when you're done with this video and just check out our podcast. You can be found on the Sportsman's Empire Podcast Network. Uh, we can also be found on Apple Podcasts, and we can also be found on Spotify. Um, if you're on Apple, if you could please leave us a five star review and a written review, that'd be amazing. Um, and if you can Leave us a five-star review on Spotify. That'd also be great. Um, as you can see here, we've got a board here for the Tri-State Trifecta. Uh, this is Kevin Creeley from the Mid-Atlantic Outdoors. Uh, you can check him out. He's also on the Sportsman's Empire pod Podcast Network. He's got really great hunting content for uh, the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, so the Tri-State Trifecta is we're trying to harvest a deer in all three states that we're going to be hunting in. We may or may not hunt in more than three states this year, but I definitely intend on hunting uh, New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. I've already harvested a doe. Obviously, I've harvested two does, but I've harvested a doe in New Jersey. Kevin Creeley was in North Carolina for a early season hunt, and uh, he got a doe down, so congratulations to him. Um, someone had asked about that, so I figured I'd uh, give a little bit of information. Um, but that's what that is. It's a tri-state trifecta, so we're hoping to, uh, when the gun season comes around, I'm going to be traveling to New York and Pennsylvania, so I'm hoping that I can harvest there as well. But um, anybody who's going to be hunting multiple states, this is a challenge that we've uh, extended out to our viewers. Uh, if you want to be a part of it, you know, just say that you want to and just, you know, document what you've done so far in the season and let us know and we'll shout you out. Maybe you can get your head on the board. Um, you know, we'll talk about it in the podcast as well. So uh, check those out. I uh, just wanted to give an update on the hunt so far. So as you can see, we we went into the area that we were looking for road rash and um Last night we actually had an encounter with a couple other younger bucks. Uh, looked like a couple of three and a half year olds and then maybe like a two and a half year old. Um, one of them was pretty nice. I couldn't tell if it was a small eight or um, I zoomed in on him. He might be a seven. Um, we, you know, we, we were thinking we might have an opportunity, but we just never got a shot. They kind of squared up. I thought he was going to present himself and um, he ended up staying behind some brush and then they worked off and my camera gear started to uh, die out on me, so I wasn't able to do a, um, a in-the-car update. Uh, I started to do a little bit of video editing and on um, the, the does that I had harvested early in the season. And I saw that the lighting actually is not really that great in the car, so I'm going to try to do as many updates um, with better lighting as I can going forward. But, you know... Some people thought that it was it was funny, but you know we want to make sure that we're giving quality footage as well. So we're gonna work on getting that a little bit better. Uh, maybe I'll bring a light with me or something. Anyway, yeah. So I mean, as you saw in the footage, we had them come out of that bedding area, um, it's looking like it's a little bit of a buck nest. If I if I, you know, don't say so, but um, you know we we think we saw road rash the other night coming out of there, and then we saw these three bucks coming out of there. So. Um, I'm thinking that I definitely need to get across that creek. Um, it, it, where I set up was a little bit conservative. You know, I, I've been preaching about getting aggressive and getting in close on these deer early season before they can pattern you and then they can kind of learn to avoid you. But um, I did uh, took a little bit of a conservative approach. We sat on the opposite side. Um, we did a little bit of scouting first, which is why we ended up trying to do it because even though we know that they're coming out of that bedding area, I didn't know if they were also using the other side of the creek, which we ended up seeing some rubs uh, on that side as well. So, 
you know, if they're if those deer are not using that side of the creek, maybe there's another group of deer that are using the opposite side. So we wanted to try to see, and um, there was some sign, but we didn't see anything during the day. Um, the only thing we saw was on the other side. So maybe they're using it in the nighttime. Maybe they're making like a loop. Um, I'm not really sure. I, I, I want to try to maybe get some cameras on the the creek crossings and see when, if any time that they're using those. Um, maybe just sporadically, maybe during the nighttime. Um, but yeah, it was a really cool encounter. Um, we're going to try to get ourselves set up in a tree on the opposite side and hopefully we can get in tight and get in close. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, get some, get my waders on and cross that creek because I definitely can't come in from the side that they're on. I think that was the problem the day that we had to saw road rash at, at last light is because in order to get to where I want to hunt them, which is where they're utilizing in daylight the edge of that creek, I've got to walk across that bedding area. Well, not through it, but next to it. And they're either able to see me visually from where they're bedded or they're able to hear me or potentially smell me because um, they're having to walk over that, that walking trail that I'm using to get in in order to get to where I'm going to be. So I'm going to have to cross that creek and um, we'll see what happens. But uh, we've... we've found a nice little group of deer here and we're hoping that we can't harvest something before the end of the season um, the early bow season ends on October 25th and the extended bow starts on October 26th so we only have a little bit of time left to be able to put something down um, we've got one weekend left and then I've got a wedding coming up that I need to go to my cousin Joe he's going to be uh, getting married he's another person who's going to be probably featured on the channel at some point going forward in the season he's a he's a big hunter and an outdoorsman and um, he's going to be looking to get some uh, footage and some some uh, harvest on on camera or at least some footage of the recovery and the um, the post harvest report and then we'll, we'll probably feature him on here as well um, but yeah so I've got some obligations coming up and I'm not going to be able to uh, get in the woods that last weekend so you know we're, we're up against it if we don't get a buck down within the next week or so then we're gonna end up probably eating a tag and we don't want to do that so uh, let's get in there and let's
bedding in here. They come this way. And they come that way. We've got one lane. Two lanes. We've seen them go back there. Potentially have a lane there. We've got a river crossing back there. That's where I shot the piebald doe. We've got another river crossing there. We've got another river crossing here. And we've got trails all down in here.
beautiful. See him standing. I think he's gonna go down. I think he just went down. He just went down. I cannot believe my car is full. I think he's down. I was filming him coming in, I was waiting for him to come in, and the car stopped working, the car was full. The car was full, I can believe it. I got me shooting it on the GoPro. I don't have, I don't have the shot on the GoPro, but I had to have my back turned. do the initial inspection here. This is right at the base of my tree. I don't know exactly where he was standing, but I think he was standing on this trail. Here's my arrow, covered in blood. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. Covered in blood all the way through. I think we're gonna find him. I think we're gonna find him. We've got blood through here. You know what? Let me leave. Let me leave my bow and my backpack where we're going to cross the river. Alright, let's find the blood again. Here's blood. And then the blood cuts into here. Blood kind of gets. If we hit him as good as we think we did, we should have more blood. Alright, let's turn back.
go to this leaf here. We don't have a lot of blood. You would think there'd be more blood. different ways it could have went here. Here we go. Looks like he jumped up over this. It looks like he went from here. I'm starting to get more blood here. Here's more blood here. On the ground. Oh, look, here we go. All of this has blood on it. We're starting to see the blood we want to see now. I see him. I see him and I smell him. We're gonna finish following the blood trail. We're gonna finish following the blood trail and there he is. We found him. I can smell him, man, does he smell. That is a nice sized deer, y'all. Oh, man. We did it. We did it. It looks like we center punched him. It came out right underneath, right on the heart. Heart shot. Uh, he's stuck in some. One, two. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like he's a seven. This is the seven. It's the seven corner we thought it was. All right, we got some work cut out for us. We're gonna have to go get the truck, move it. We're gonna have to get our sled. And we're gonna have to get him out of here. We're in one lung. Maybe one lung, maybe double lung, heart. We'll see. Oh man, Woo, that was crazy. That was one heck of a drag. That is a big boy. Okay. <sighs> He's in the truck. What's up everybody? That is a wrap for our for my second video on the Wing and Tail Outdoor uh, YouTube channel. We've got a buck down in New Jersey. I'm so excited. Uh, I know the rest of the team is so excited. We can't wait to keep bringing you guys more content. Um, we're getting ready to film another one of our episodes for the Wing and Tail Boys podcast. Uh, we can be found on the Sportsman's Empire Network. Uh, we can also be found on Apple Podcasts can also be found on Spotify podcasts. Um, if you can, please leave us a five-star review again on either one of those platforms. On Apple, you can leave us a written review as well. Um, you know, thanks for everybody for liking and, and commenting on our content. All the people who have subscribed, the new subscribers, uh, it's great to have you guys with us. We can't wait to share and build a uh, community with you guys. Um, to all the people who shared our content, even bigger thanks. You know, we can't do it without you guys. For all the people that are out there helping us spread the word and get our content out to more people, we really appreciate it. Um, we have buck down update. We need to update the tri state trifecta board. So I'm going to take the dough off of get out of here and I'm going to put my buck up first leg of the tri state trifecta down, New Jersey. All right, we need to get Christopher on this board and uh. All the luck to uh, Kevin Creeley, who's going to be starting this, the season at, in the state that he's hunting. Um, all the luck to him. Uh, we can't wait to fill this board up. Hopefully there's more people on this board. Uh, hopefully we got more stories to bring to you guys. I know I can't wait to get back in, this, in the tree and bring some more uh, content to you guys. Um, again, check us out in the, in, in the videos. We've got another video. I just finished uh, talking about getting all the things together for the DIY bow target video. So look for that. That'll be coming soon. Um, and also look out for the new episodes of our podcast airing every Thursday on the Wing and Tail Boys podcast. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, success is just a commitment away.